I'd like to do another video on bash parameter expansion. This time, instead of talking about brace expansion or tilde expansion, I'd like to hone in on variable expansion in bash. And if you're new to bash, the first thing you need to know about variables is that you always want to wrap them in quotes. So for example, if I'm specifying a new variable called check this out, if I'm new to bash, I might echo it in this fashion. And that would be just fine. But later down the line, I might special specify a variable as check this out with new lines in it. And then if I try to uh, echo it out, I'll notice that my new lines are gone. However, if I wrap it in quotes, my new lines are preserved. The reason this is happening is because uh, bash separates fields based on a environment variable called the internal field separator. The internal field separator is stored in IFS for internal field separator. And if I pipe this into cat with a dash A for show all characters, then I can see that there's three characters inside here. Uh, space, a tab, and a new line. So those are considered bashes, field separators, and uh, they can cause problems in your variables if you don't wrap your variables in quotes. So long story short, always wrap your variables in quotes. One such instance where you might be tempted to not wrap your variables in quotes, but you still should, is when specifying an array. So if I make a directory called test, and let's just make some files, I might uh, be tempted to try and define an array called files and set it equal to an asterisk. And I will see quickly that this seems to work. When I echo files, I get all the files I wanted. However, if I wrap it in quotes, I just get an asterisk. And then I think to myself, well, I guess I don't need to wrap this in quotes in this instance. But you'd be wrong. Um, because this is the wrong way to define uh, an array in Bash. Later on in this script, I may want to access the first file in this list. And if I go online and look at how I'm going to uh, do that, you might see that you can do that in this fashion. This is how you access the first element of an array in bash. But if I do this in this case, I get asterisk back. And if I use one, I get b.txt. So you can see that the a is completely gone. Uh, to specify all the elements in an array in bash, you use the at symbol instead of a number for your index. And you can see here that a has been completely replaced by the asterisk. And that's not what we wanted at all. The right way to remedy this is when you're defining the files uh, environment variable, or when you're truthfully defining any array, you should wrap it in parentheses. So if I wrap that asterisk in parentheses, then you can see the A is specified as it should be, and that when I do uh, the zeroth element of the array, I get what I expected. So this is not an, an example of a case where you don't want to wrap in quotes, you still want to wrap it in quotes. Uh, while we're talking about uh, arrays here, you'll notice that instead of just specifying the variable like this, I wrapped it in, uh, in braces. Now let's go back to our example of our test variable called check this out. If I want to add a period at the end of this check this out to make this a sentence, for example, then I might try to do something like this which would be fine. However, if I wanted to add the letter S at the end, then bash will interpret this as the variable tests instead of test S. One way I can re remedy this is by wrapping test in braces, and then I can still print it how I wanted to. So braces uh, are useful in many scenarios, but they also uh, extend variables and allow extra features. Um, one of those features is, like I showed you a moment ago, is in dealing with arrays so that I can print out all the elements of my files. Uh, a couple of other examples of special things that this does 
is you can uh, specify offsets. So let's say I only want the first word of check this out, or I only want the first five characters. Then I can start at the offset of zero and say give me five characters and just get check. Or if I start at element six and only get uh, excuse me six and only want four characters, then I can just get the word uh, this. Or if I do zero and nine, I can just get uh, or zero and ten, I can get check this. So this is one way to get substrings in Bash. You can also do this with array elements. So let's say I want the uh, the elements of my array that uh, start at element three, and I want six of them. Then I can get D E F G H I. So it works with both arrays and variables. I can also see how long a particular array is by putting the pound sign in front of it. So if I put the pound sign in front of it, I see there's 26 elements in this array, which is true because there's 26 uh, letters in the alphabet. I can also do this for my other variable, check this out, and see that there are 14 um, characters in check this out. Another thing I can do is um, I can uh, remove a prefix or suffix. So let's say I want to uh, remove the word out from this variable. One way I can do that is by specifying a percent symbol here and then just saying space out and it will remove everything uh, after, it'll remove that pattern from the end. Um, however, if I tried to remove check in this fashion, it won't work because check is not at the end, it's at the beginning. So percent only works with a suffix. If you want to remove a prefix, you can use the pound symbol. So you can remember this with the, the mnemonic, um, pound is prefix and percent is suffix, okay? I don't know if you'll ever use that, but just in case you do, uh, you might often uh, see in bash scripts that people use two percent symbols instead of one. Why is that? It seems to do exactly the same thing. Well, it kind of does. Um, for this example, let's take a look at our test variable again. And let's say the pattern that I specify is h star. If I just do one percent, then it will remove the first match of h star, which is the last h in it. However, if I do 2%, it will do the last match that it finds. So then I just get C back because it matched all the way to the H in C. So uh, if you're just removing file extensions, you probably, it doesn't matter which one you use because often you know, somebody will set a file like uh, test.txt and they'll just want to remove the txt from that. And to do that, it doesn't matter whether I use 1% or 2%, it's going to be the same because I'm, my pattern is explicit, it's .txt. Um, so in that case, it doesn't really matter. But if you're gonna use an asterisk, asterisk or some other kind of expanding pattern, then it does. Uh, the same is true for prefixes. You can use uh, two uh, pound symbols to match the furthest prefix. You can also um, you can also let's see uppercase and lowercase a variable. So if I did a test in this manner and I put an x, x uh, sorry a caret at the end of it, then that will uh, uppercase the first letter. If I do two carats, it will uppercase all of the letters. Um, you can also specify a pattern behind these. So I can say I only want to um, uh, uppercase all the H's in this variable. It only works, this pattern only works for one character at a time though. So I can't do something like heck to uppercase only heck. I can only do singular letters. So I could do C for example. If I use a pattern with only one caret, then it will only work on the first letter of the variable. So if I did a P, it would have no effect. But if I did C, then it would still capitalize the first letter because the first letter is in fact a C. So that might be a little bit confusing, but uh, you can always look at this video again if you ever need to remind yourself of these things. Um, this also works with arrays. So if I did uh, you know, my files array 
and put a caret at the end, then it will uppercase the first letter of each of them, or if I do two carrots, then it will uppercase all of the elements. Um, instead of caret, I can also use a uh, I can also use a comma for lowercase, and it works exactly the same way. Now I'm not demonstrating it right now because all of the characters in my variables are already lowercase, but just trust me, it works. Another thing you can do is the uh, tilde symbol, which will swap the case. So it's, if it's already lowercase, it'll make it uppercase. If it's already uppercase, it'll make it lowercase. And uh, again, the, uh, the double uh, worked pretty much the same in each of these cases. Uh, something you might find more useful than those is the uh, substitute. So if you use vim or set or something, you're probably already used to, used to the substitute command. For example, example uh, if I wanted to instead change this, oops, I don't know why I put a dollar sign here, and pound to comment. If I wanted to change, uh, you know, es to wa, Instead, I could do something like this. You know, we could even do this instead to illustrate it. S to A. Uh, what did I do wrong here? Oh, because I want uh, H I. Let's just do this. <laughs> Check twat out because I changed H uh, I S to W A T. Now, instead of piping this to said, I can do it all within bash internals by just putting uh, a couple dashes after the variable like this. Now if there's more than one occurrence, like say I wanted to change each of the H's to X's, now if I, in this example it's just changing the first H to X and not the second one. Well, just like you can use the G flag instead, if you use two forward slashes then you can get all of the replacements. Um, also in sed or in vim or those kind of uh, regex patterns, if you want to specify from the beginning of the pattern, you use a caret symbol. So like, for example, if I in sed wanted to do something like check and change it to black or something, then I would specify it with a caret symbol. You can do a similar feature in bash, but it does not use the caret symbol. Instead, it uses a pound symbol. Remember, pound is prefix. Pound is prefix. So if I change this check to black, then I get black. And likewise, percent is suffix. So if I use percent here, then I can change out to man. Uh, again, these all work on arrays, so um, if I have my files array and I want to change all of the txts to mds, then I get all my files with md instead of txt. That can be super helpful in a lot of scenarios. Uh, the last few things I want to talk about are, um, are special things that find out whether or not the variable is defined. Uh, so, for example, if I define two variables here, undefined, which is set to nothing, so technically it's undefined. That's why it's named that. And then I set defined to true. If I try to uh, echo undefined by itself, I get nothing because it's undefined. Uh, if I use a special um, extra here in bash and I use a colon minus, which the minus just means if it's undefined. So minus means minus this variable. You can think about it like that. Then instead of echoing you know, the variable that's not there, I can echo something like, uh, oops, let's not, use a, uh, let's not use an exclamation point though because I have history expansion set on. So if I wanted to set this to something else, I could put like not here. Um, however, if I did the exact same thing with the uh, defined variable and I tried to use the minus and said not here, then it's going to echo true because defined is true. Now let's try these uh, let's try these again, except this time instead of minus, I'm going to use plus, which does the exact opposite of minus. 
So because undefined is undefined, it uses it. Whereas with defined, because defined is defined, it doesn't use it. Just to drive that home again, let's go back and see what uh, the minus symbol does. And you can see here how they are all different. This one, if undefined is defined, then use not here. But in this case, it's not defined, so we just echo undefined, which is nothing. And this one, if defined is defined, use not here, so it uses not here. And this one, if undefined is not defined, use not here. And this one, if defined is not defined, but it is, so use true. So hopefully that makes sense and you can see how that's working. Um, there's two other ones that you can use here. One is, what if when the variable is not defined, instead of using something else, like instead of wanting to echo not here, I want to throw an error. So I can say throw an error. And you can see here I used a question mark. That will make my script exit with an error and throw an error called throw an error. So question mark throws an error with this as the error message. Um, another thing I can do is use the equal sign and that will redefine this variable. So now it prints throw an error and uh, undefined is now defined as throw an error. So this is kind of like in Ruby the or equals or whatever other, other languages use that kind of technique. So that was a whirlwind tour. You might need to watch this a couple times, try these commands out to internalize them, but hopefully you learned something new and hopefully it's useful to you. I appreciate you watching. Please like it and let me know uh, if this is a kind of video you like and I'll make more of them. And subscribe if you want more content that's like this. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great week.